it makes a big difference to take account of the whole person in, in the company that you're building. How has that made a difference? Can, can you give us an example of where that has really uh, become very apparent to you that you've had more success because right. of your uh, taking a broader view of you know, the people that you work with and you know, their asset, you know, their lives as an asset just to the business alone. Right. I'll give, you, I'll give you an example of one that was actually probably one of the potentially scariest moments in the company history. We were five years into the company, and we were 100, 150 people. Uh, we had done about $30 million in business, and we were sitting down to start to think about the next five years. Mm -hmm. you know, how do we get to $100 million a year in business? How do we get to be 350 people? How do we think about taking the company public? All these big things. And I was sitting down with one of my co-founders who ran the engineering team and the services team. And it was, and it was sort of the right-hand man for me in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. And we're having this discussion. We're all both really excited. And then he drops this bomb on me and says, well, this is all really exciting. He said, I'm not sure I'm going to be here for the next five years. So I swallowed kind of hard and I said, okay, well, why? You know, what's going on? And he mm -hmm. told me how in his life he had typically worked someplace for four or five years and then typically took some time off for himself, did some traveling, and he'd done it consistently for the past 15 to 20 years. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to do that again. He, he was to, ready. He was ready to go. For the next sojourn. Yeah. And, you know, he had a wife and a young son, and now was the time to do it, and they wanted to take three or four months off and go live in Europe. And he said, you know, because of that... You know, he wouldn't be here. And I asked what he would do when he came back. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I'd might likely go start another company or try to find or join something a lot like Vontu. And I asked him, basically, I said, well, would you consider coming back? And he said, of course, but I can't imagine that that opportunity is open to me. Hmm. So and he made an assumption about having to leave being final. Correct. And to be honest, in most cases, that's what normally people that's normal. do. That's the norm. Uh, here's a co-founder who's sort of leaving to go take three or four months off. Well, you know, why would they come back? Mm -hmm. And I did the quick math and said, okay, it's going to take me three to six months to find a replacement. It cost me fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars in recruiting fees to find mm -hmm. a replacement. And then another three to six months to train that person, and mm -hmm. hopefully they'd be successful. But I would say fifty percent chance they wouldn't work out. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at a twelve-month investment with a fifty percent likelihood of failure versus a three or four-month absence an absolutely, almost 100% guarantee that he would be successful when he came back. It was a no-brainer. No-brainer. And so I just said, hey, look, why don't you just go take the time off, and when you're ready, come back. And he was shocked. He, he was said, the board would never agree to that. I said, That's not, the board will be fine. Mm -hmm. And we did it, and it was wildly successful for him. And it also had interesting uh, results for other people. The people mm -hmm. on his team were then given opportunities to grow and take on new responsibilities. Mm -hmm and showed what they were able to do. So when he came back, not only did he come back and he was fully charged and really happy, but his team had also demonstrated that they had the ability to take on new hmm. things and new skills, and they eventually ended up doing great things in the company as well. And Mike now, uh, after we sold the company to Symantec, is now the CTO for the entire company, a $6 billion software company. He's the CTO for the entire enterprise business. Hmm. So here's a guy, you know, three years ago, he didn't think he was gonna be here, and now he's you know, CTO of a multi-billion dollar organization. Hmm. And the people so, on his team are doing great things, too. So what's the moral of that the moral amazing is, tale? The moral is to really think out of the box and not be afraid to experiment. And mm -hmm. don't think that, I, I think there's this tendency to think, I can't do that for one person because I need to do it for everybody else, mm -hmm. first of all. Mm -hmm. And leadership is very much a situational thing. You need to think about each situation uniquely, uniquely and differently mm -hmm. and take into account that person's unique you know, needs, desires, situation, call it what you will, and adapt the work sphere, if you're a leader, mm -hmm. to what's important to that individual. And if you do that, you're likely to get someone that is way more engaged. Mm -hmm. And the more engaged someone is, the more successful it's going to make you and the company or organization that you're a part of. Well, how do you then deal, though, with perceptions of unfairness or, well, you gave him that deal, why can't I have that deal? Yeah. Well, interesting, in that case, we decided to actually offer it to everybody. Oh, so we said, you know what, this is probably not a bad thing to do for everybody. Mm -hmm. And after five years, we basically gave people eight weeks off. And we also had a general cultural philosophy that it was important to give people time to figure out how to, if they wanted to spend more time at home or doing something else, and we figured out ways to make that work. 
Uh, another example was uh, uh, actually two, two people that had been with the company for a number of years. One was a woman, one was a man, and they both had children. In the man's case, his wife had had the child. And we had a very flexible time off policy for men and women. We mm -hmm. wanted people to spend time with their kids. And both of them, um, when they came back, said that you know, one of them wanted to work part-time. And she was a director at the time, had a team of people. And she said, look, I only want to work part-time. And I said, no problem. I'd rather have you here 20 hours than zero hours. Because mm -hmm. I know I'm not going to get you for 40. Mm -hmm. And we did that for a year. She was so happy. She was so happy because of what she was able to do at home for mm -hmm. that year. And after a year, she ended up coming back full time. And now she too has gone to great, great things at Symantec. Mm -hmm. And Chris did a very, very similar thing where he wanted to take some time off. And ha giving people that flexibility and thinking about what's important to them, mm -hmm. it, you, you're going to reap the rewards and the benefits back to the organization um, in, in ways that you don't even you think about when you do it. And mm -hmm. you shouldn't be afraid to try those things. So why are people afraid to try that? You've seen, I'm sure, examples of where those kinds of uh, risks are, are not even considered. Well, it, you know, I had the benefit, I was, it was a startup when I was a CEO. So I, I, mm -hmm. I'm cognizant of the fact that I could make decisions that right. are probably easier to do. Um, so it may be a lot more difficult to try to do those things if you're part of a 20,000 person organization. Although, I think when people are creative, there's ways to do it. Mm -hmm. I think part of it is people are afraid because it's not necessarily the norm, right? There's, mm -hmm. you know, you get your HR person, they come in and they create the handbook and here's the rules and regulations and people feel like they have to sort of do that. And I think that there is a fear on a lot of people's behalf that it might not work. And so because they have this fear of failure that I might mm -hmm. try to do this and they're worried about all the negative potential consequences that they don't even try it. Mm -hmm. So that fear of failure doesn't let them experiment. Right. And I think experimentation is really important. Letting people try new things mm -hmm. with, 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 and here's the important part. You say, we're going to try that, but here's the results you need to have at the end. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you need to deliver these things. You're going to be responsible for these objectives. And if you think about the objectives as the important thing, the what people need to deliver, mm -hmm. as opposed to the how they need to deliver mm -hmm. it. The employee will be much more happy, you'll be much more happy, and it also provides a metric to say, hey, we tried this thing and it, it, it worked or it didn't work. And if it works, then it was successful. And if it didn't work, at least you tried. Mm -hmm. And sometimes even just the fact that you try will actually keep a team more engaged, because it shows that you're willing to be open and try new things and, and, and you care. And by just showing that you care by trying new things, it can make the team more engaged and make them hard, you know, working hard and more successful for the company as well. And do you think that's something, uh, that, that philosophy of uh, being willing to experiment to account for the things that are really important to, to people in your organization, does that work at the startup phase as well as uh, at the sort of uh, adolescent phase of, uh, of, of a company's uh, developmental uh, arc? I think so. I, and, and part of it, I read this somewhere, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a funny story, so I'll tell it anyway. And I'm sure someone will go find if it is a true story. But there was some study that was done on worker productivity. It was on a factory line. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to test different environments of the employees and how it would affect their productivity. Mm -hmm. So they said, what if we turn the lights up higher? What impact would that have on worker productivity? The story went that productivity, surprisingly, went up. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. What if we turn them down? The assumption was that worker productivity would go down. Turned out productivity went up again. People were scratching their heads and saying, well, that doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And it turned around, it was sort of a psychological thing for people that because they realized that people cared about right. their, what they were doing, they worked harder. And so I think that you can apply those lessons mm -hmm. across the board. I think it gets more complicated because of, I'll call it the corporate bureaucracy that mm -hmm. occurs, you know, there's a tendency to be less flexible because when you have 20,000 people in an organization, there's a view that you have to be more cookie cutter. But I think in today's world and going forward, even those organizations need to think about how to be flexible mm -hmm. because it is, you know, no longer do we have people doing careers at companies. People move around to find the thing that's going to make them happy. And your key job, no matter what size an organization is, to hire the best people and engage with those people. And engagement is about thinking about 
all the other spheres of their life. And a lot more experimentation. Absolutely. And demonstration that you care. By the way, that was the Hawthorne effect. I know that, that research Is really it true, well. actually? Oh, oh yeah. That, well, that's a very important study. It took place in the late 20s at a, at a company called Western Electric, and it was done by Elton Mayo and his colleagues at Harvard. And that was, in, uh, in many ways, the beginning of the whole human relations movement where uh, you know, they were sort of engineering the workplace and then discovered, as a result of exactly as you described it, that it was, it was really about paying attention right. to what people were doing and what they needed. It was the act of paying attention that was the, the, uh, the important variable there in sort of changing how people felt about their work and their level of motivation. Mm -hmm.